Today on Road Testament, more than $220 million in collector cars were sold at auction last week. What does it mean for car collecting and for the economy in general? And what cars would you spend your millions on? All that in the news. We've got Jalopnik Senior Editor, writer. Writer. Travis Okulski, that's today on Road Testament. So this week in the news, everybody's talking about the journalist who grenaded the flat 12. So Formula One veteran David Piper let UK auto journalist and former race driver Mark Hales drive P Piper's Porsche 917 on a racetrack for a magazine article. But what happened next is enough to make any writer rethink ever borrowing another man's car. Travis. So the car over revved. Hale says he didn't miss a shift. Yeah. But like you said, grenaded the engine. Yeah. I mean... So Hal says he had a gentleman's agreement with Piper that the 81-year-old F1 legend would cover the cost of any mechanical damage caused during the track session. And uh, Piper, who needless to say is a multi-millionaire, multi uh, denied ever making the deal. And he sued Hales for $176,000 in damages. And the high court has ruled in his favor. Hales, who writes for Octane and Auto Italia, um, is stuck with... 76,000 for repairs of the car right. and 100 grand in legal costs. Dude. Yeah. You drive it's a lot of cars that other people own. I mean, is this enough to like scare you away from ever driving anything? And I just want to mention Chris Harris drives all kinds of right. people's cars on uh, on drive. Just drove a Singer 911 worth like 400 grand. Um these are things that y you know could imagine I mean, you know, Auto journalists aren't exactly the most highly paid people. No. N next thing you know, you have to buy a house that you don't get a house with. Right. You have <laughs> to. Was it you break it, you buy it. This time it's break it. You spend your entire life savings fixing it. Well, what do you and think? And you don't even get anything from it. Right. You get nothing. And, I mean, I don't strive. I try not to drive a lot of other people's cars. I drive cars that come from the manufacturers mainly because exactly this. Yeah. I'm concerned about breaking someone else's car. I don't want to be responsible or on the bill for... A gentleman's agreement that might be for you know a cheap car, but it could be something. Driving a 917 is a rare, rare car. Yeah. If I break it and get 175 thousand dollars in damages, I, I don't make that much in a week. Right. Well, I mean, it's interesting because the 917 is not an easy car to drive. No. And Hales's argument is that the car there was a, a, a mechanical issue with the transmission, that the car over revved itself. It bounced out of gear. Right. And over revved itself. Uh, Piper said he told him to keep it at 7,000 7, RPMs. Car mm -hmm. went to like 8,500 and the, and the motor went. So 917s are tricky, but everybody wants to know about them. Everybody wants to, re I, would, I would read an article about right. a 917 being driven. Especially so right for a place like Octane, because Octane, that's yeah. what they do is drive older and more exotic, awesome cars like a 917. And a modern driving impression of a 917 would be something to have. That'd so, awesome. but is this story just like, oh God, that sucks? Or is there a bigger thing to think about here? I'd like to think there isn't a bigger thing to think about. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like if one guy goes out and breaks a, you know, 176,000, and we're hearing this might even be a replica car. Yeah, there, there was there's, a, a there's reports conflicting reports. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, Piper did own it since 1970. So um, the car's appreciated a lot since then. I mean, it's 1.4 million pounds, which, yeah. which is, is like a billion it's, American. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot American. It's, it's many American, American dollars. The mighty British pound. So the bank, $176,000 would ruin most auto journalists right. forever. But then you have to think. I mean, and I, again, this is sort of devil's advocate because it's sort of there is most people mm -hmm. believe that break it, you buy it. And yet the guy can pay for it. He's a rich guy, Piper. Yeah. This guy's a poor guy. Piper's car was going to be in a magazine. Now, granted, the magazine would benefit from having a 917 in it. But don't you think there might be a little bit of a gentleman's agreement that, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll cover this. It's my car. And he doesn't own it anymore, by the way. And this happened... Um, three years ago? Three years ago, yeah. yeah. So it's not like it's brand new news, it's just the judgment right. in uh, Piper's favor is new. Well, what, cons what I find interesting is that it's an unwritten gentleman's agreement and you're driving a car worth 1.4 million pounds. Wouldn't you think if you're driving a car that's worth that much money, you'd have a piece of paper sign that says, I'm not going to hold you responsible for something like that? I can understand if it's a Kia Rio, yeah, you yeah. have a gentleman's agreement. But right. if you have you know, a Porsche 917, you have something that says, 
hey, if I damage your car, I'm not responsible. Right. Or I'm responsible for this amount of money. Or you'd have the proper insurance in place. Well, something. that's insurance is the key. Hales is a freelancer. Right. So most, um, if you're an employee, most magazines, I guess most big companies that you work for will indemnify you to some degree. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least they'll insist that there's some sort of umbre umbrella policy in place. Right. Um, in this case, as a freelancer, he didn't have it. So he's, I mean, no matter what we say, he's stuck for 176 grand, which sucks. So, I mean, he's got a mortgage for a house he doesn't ever, right. the bottom line is, is never gonna this see. sucks. And the lawyer's fees are almost as much as the damage well, to the car more. itself. It's more, you know, the, that's the other thing. Legal fees are 100 grand, the car, just to fix the car, I mean, I guess it makes sense, you know, rebuilding a 911 engine would be about 7,600 right. all told, you know, add a zero. Because the 917 is 10 times better. Because it's 10 <laughs> times better. Than the 911 from right. a similar era, I guess. Um, yeah, so um, he's on the hook for more legal fees because he also has to pay for Piper's legal fees. That's, that's how it works. So on top of having to pay his own 50 quid in legal fees, he's got to pay the other guy's legal fees. So oh. just a bad scene all around. I guess I wouldn't want to be a journalist in England then. I know. And I wouldn't want to drive any of the cars we're going to be talking about next. When we go over the couch, we're talking about the big auction news this last week. Just gigantic money. It's insane. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. It's a preview. Mad <laughs> Road Testament, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> all the other things. Travis, on the Mike. couch. So um, what are we talking about? This past week was the post-holiday auction bacchanalia, also known as Trophy Wife Spring Break. Yep. It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. Six major auto auction, uh, auctions happen here. And um, we're not talking about police auctions where you can get a Crown Vic for 500 bucks. No. These are gigantic money cars. and and. The, um, the interesting thing is it just keeps, no matter what anyone thinks about the economy in the middle class, the, mm -hmm. the market for these really, really, really high-priced cars just keeps getting hotter and hotter. And uh, every year. Every it year. It just grows leaps and bounds every year. Yeah, it's insane. So here's some of the stats this year. 2,234 vehicles sold for record $223.8 million. That's 22% up from the previous dollar record of 183.9 million last year. The average price paid per car, because I mean, there were a lot of cars sold. A lot sold. of cars. So we're gonna just focus on the top five because it's mm -hmm. in the absolute crazy million. But um, a lot of cars were bought, but the average price was $100,000 per car. So That's some are eight million, some were like 7,500, but, but an average price. Pretty high average. That, that works out. Because last year it was only 85,000. Well. Only. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, it's, everything's insane. Yeah. This is kind of a crazy stat. Um, 5,000 people just at the Barrett-Jackson auction, mm -hmm. this is just one of the six, um, had combined lines of credit of nearly a billion dollars. I think somebody with a telephone calculator could probably tell us, you know, how many dollars how it many is dollars per, per person. person. It's, it's a fair amount. Um, and here's why. Really, the average price of a classic Ferrari is up 59% over the last 36 months. So if you had bought a $2 million Ferrari five years ago, it would be it would worth, be worth it, no, you would have more than quadrupled million. your money, basically. Not going by this particular stat, no. but if you look at the auctions that, that went by. Now, it, it's, just, it's insane money. Yeah. So we asked you guys what, um, what you would spend your sick millions on. So. Uh, of course, STI G911, uh, the Mad Max V8 Interceptor. Oh, wait a minute. Do you know what this, uh, this ties into? Something we're going to be talking about is, is that, that the car that got the most attention was the Batmobile. Yes. And we're going to be talking about that in a second. But STI uh, G911 says Dang. he would pay six millions for the Mad Max Interceptor. Which supposedly is going to be in six fast, six furious. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yes. Exactly. Uh, I saw a picture of that earlier this week, so look out for that in, yeah. in theaters soon with a 37 speed transmission. Exactly. Jack Gray, 959. Yes. Obviously. Um, Ferrari 275 GTB4, this is my dream car, says. I mean, that's Vento, right? V3 N70. Yes. Vento. Yes, I believe so. Um, it's a coffee at Starbucks. Yes, exactly. Yes. 
Um, I'd never spend $4.6 million on any one car, but instead build a garage and fill it with all the cars I've ever wanted. Um, right now, you could do that as yeah. long as all the cars you never want you ever wanted didn't Our, include Ferrari 250s or the Batmobile or the Batmobile. Right, right, exactly. That's B put test test whatever. <laughs> all right, let's go. Um, I noticed that the Lamborghini Miura SV seems to have crested the one million mark. That's another one that would have yeah. been a really good investment if you paid five hundred grand for it a couple, a couple years, years ago. ago. Um, I think it was worth it at ten times the price. Okay. So a $10 million for... Says Big Pimp and Gubby. $10 million for a Lambo SV when you can get a Mira S. I think, I think it's headed that way. You think $10 million for an SV? In 10 years? Okay. I mean... I, I can't disprove it, so... Well, it's just crazy to think that, that if you have a million to lay down mm -hmm. on a car right now, that it's just going to keep going up, or is there a bubble? We'll talk about that in a second. Yep. Um, this is kind of a weird one. A 2003 Jag XJ8 Super V8 Van and Plot body, and I think he said... Meant Convert. Convert. Yeah. By the way, but swap it with a, an XJR supercharged V8 from a modern one. Or just buy a, or or just buy buy a Maserati. Or just buy a 2010 Quattroporte Sport. And you could buy like... You could buy like 17 like of them. 17 of them. Yeah, At least. Nice. Thank you, Butter Rainbows. It's a nice name. Um, and of course, Sleevey B has a giant list of cars. You could just check that out and <laughs> see what he... Uh, but he's got both Kazi... Ka uh, uh, what would that would be? The RS200. RS um, and then the Escort Cosworth also. So you guys have good taste. Um, we'll see in 20 years when you guys are all millionaires right. um, what you end up buying and what cars you end up pushing toward the eight to $10 million <laughs> range. So anyway, this is the first one. So this is the 58 Ferrari 250 GT California long wheelbase Spider. Went for 8.25 million. Which doesn't seem, looking at it this way, it doesn't seem like an awfully off-market price either, because I think it was about five years ago, James Coburn has a two, had a 250 GT California short wheelbase yeah. that sold to Chris Evans, radio personality in England. He sold it for, I think it was 5.5 million pounds. Yeah. So again, it's about $38 million, give or take Well, it's a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, obviously, the Ferrari thing is interesting because so many of them are different. Right. right? They were all built differently. You know, you get the, the carriage works that, that worked, mm -hmm. on, um, worked on a lot of them. Um, and so there are one of ki one of a kind Ferraris. Right. So I mean, yeah, it makes sense that these are the ones that that have get real crazy money involved. And if you say Ferrari 250 too, it could mean anything from the 250 California to this, which is the 250 GT Competizione right, Berlinetta exactly. that yeah. sold as well for what was that 8.1 million dollars? That was 8.14 million. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, you know, and these are cars that that weren't were going for. I mean, we thought they were expensive at four mm -hmm. million, and to but. double. I mean, what the hell is going on in the economy, right? So is it that rich people have just a, pulled a lot of money out to the sidelines <laughs> and they just have it sitting around and they need something to do with it? I just, I can't imagine being at the level where I can say, I've got $8 million, I'm going to buy a car right. with it. Because, you know, when I think of a car, it's something I'm going to drive, it's something I'm going to take places and park places. Yeah. I'm not going to take an $8 million thing anywhere. Right. I'm not going to take a hundred thousand. I probably wouldn't take a hundred thousand dollar car to the mall. I'd have to yeah. have, you know. Well, I mean, obviously there's nostalgia involved, but also right. there's got to be a, like a practical economic consideration with it. If you've got cars that are appreciating 60% a year, right? You know, why not give it a shot? I mean, you know, granted, we could be looking at a bubble, <laughs> which would. Which would really Which we, suck for well, these guys. Well, we saw guys. with muscle cars a little while back. Right, there was the muscle car. Because everything like Hemi Cudas and things were going for a million dollars at these shows. Now they're they're still expensive. They're still hundreds of thousands of dollars, but yeah. they're not hitting the million dollar mark anymore. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned the Hemi Cudas. There was the the it was a seventy one Hemi Cuda convertible that was like one of five. Yes. Went and that was the over million dollar right one, and um, now now I don't think that would even get that. I don't either. So. Anyway, these are, this is the one that got all the attention, right? So it's the Batmobile. The original Batmobile built from the Lincoln Futura concept right. car from 1957. And then um, George Barris got a hold of it and yeah. um, in the, in the mid-60s built this. So it sold for $4.2 million, but the yeah. official number is $4.62 million because Barrett-Jackson has a commission that they take off the top of each sale. Commissioner so Gordon? Could, it, yeah, they take, Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon comes with the car as well, but you get a, <laughs> you get, you have to pay a commission yeah. of 10% of the vehicle's price to Barrett-Jackson for the right to sell the car. So Barrett-Jackson made $420,000 oh, 
on this car alone. Well, that is amazing, right? Because so it's the auction companies yeah. that have the license to print money. They're making a kit, and this was a, this was a reserve car. Yeah. And the reserve was dropped at $2 million, I think it was. Yeah, right. They didn't think that this was going to be sold higher than I didn't two think, and a half million. I didn't think it was going to make 300000 honestly, because... I mean, it's it's cool. It's very cool. It's it a great piece one, of history. I mean, it is one but, of the originals, and there are a lot of replicas built lately. So, like to have the one that, right. that you know Adam West actually drove into the mountain. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think they had Burt Ward on stage yeah. when they sold the car. They had, if you want to see a funny thing, go on Jalopnik and search for the Batmobile because we have a GIF of George Barris's grandson standing behind George Barris where he goes through. Four seasons of emotions in about 30 seconds. It's, <laughs> it goes from pure elation to dire sadness to he's ashamed to he yeah. says, screw it, because he's just so happy for his grandpa. But right. this was incredible to see. This was incredible. All right, um, just, just to burn through these. So this is the, um, the portion, uh, 718 RSK uh, Roadster went for three, what did it go? 3.14 million. So we're, these are, it's sort of that, the, that there's a drop of a million bucks between the Batmobile and, um, and and a racing Porsche from the 50s. This should be worth more. I, you know, I personally think, I, I mean, well, come this on. Is, this is where nostalgia only goes so far. I mean, nostalgia for a, uh, a movie car, or a TV show car, in that right. case, um, beats out nostalgia for racing, apparently. Apparently. Um, this is that Maserati. This is that Maserati. Wait a minute. I, I, the 150. The, yeah, this is the... Um, it's got the 0.15 liter engine. Well, they with, said with upwards, upwards of 12 horsepower. Right, right, uh, right. It's a child. It's a kid car, actually. It's for it's for children. <laughs> right, because they said um, this is the Maserati 150 GT Spider, 3.08 million. Actually, it's a two two cc. Right. But they some somebody screwed up and it, it was like half liter. It's like a, an airplane engine or something. Yeah. Like a, but no, but it still this is um, this is one of those romantic era cars that uh, people are really super into. I um, guess, like, you know, you're not going to drive it. Well, I mean, is anybody going to drive any of these cars? No. So Jeff Musial's not here this week. He's down in Daytona, but uh, so I'm going to try to walk you through the Drive Trends Index for the week of January 14th. Obviously, last week's results and this week, E30's up, MX-5 is up, 370Z's down, BRZ's down. Um, in the affordable category, mid-range, more people are talking about the BMW M3 mm -hmm. than last week. Um, fewer for the C63 AMG, which isn't surprising because uh, the auto show was last week. Right. You know, the C63 AMG wasn't really... But, um, but the M3 wasn't either, and neither was the RS4. I think you should shut up now. Okay. <laughs> um, the Elise is down, Boxer's up. All right, so what about the top range category? That was last week. Corvette, 100%, 100%, 100, what the hell is this, where's JF? <laughs> Corvette, 100 last week, Bugatti Veyron, 81, let's 100 see this week. Corvette's down. To 88 internets. Down to 88 internets. <laughs> to 88 internets. Um, Corvette really saw the, the biggest decrease because the auto show is over it's and over. The, hype, the hype machine is kind of backing off. Yeah, people are done, they don't care about the Corvette. The juggernaut <laughs> is, uh, is, is winding down, so... Um, and 86 people care about the Bugatti Veyron. And they kind of bounced up to the, uh, the Veyron. Or the, the um, well, the Koenigsegg uh, JRR is, is up because we ran. That's, that's the drive lift. That's the drive lift, we call that. The, yes. The, you know, of course. Um, what else we got? Anything interesting? That's it. At Drive on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Drive TV. That's Road Testament for this week. Travis Nikolsky, thanks for coming. Mike Spinelli, thanks for having me. Oh, hi. See ya.